Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you are very welcome. Please adjust your settings by looking on your device, either at the top of your device or somewhere near the bottom until you can fix and get a clear picture. And if you are not a subscriber, you are welcome to subscribe because subscribing gives you access to the community page. And on the community page, I share a lot of spiritual insights that the Lord gives me in my personal time. It is just something, the community page is where I can share my views and I can share things that God is teaching me personally. And so I put them there sometimes for subscribers to benefit from. I have been putting quite a few pictures of the strange skies that people are seeing, not only in the United States, but around the world, especially that famous one that showed up a few days ago. I think it was in China, the so-called Pileus cloud, the rainbow scarf cloud. And I was just discussing with subscribers there that they are actually looking at the fulfillment of many of the things that I went over painstakingly in 2021 when the Lord was revealing to me that at the final times, which are not so far away as people think, creatures that are not man, creatures that are cursed, creatures that are descended from things that the Lord cast out of his eternal presence will come down from their unseen dimensional births or their hidden places in the skies, and they will live with us they will mingle themselves with the seed of men, meaning that in some cases, these beings who will not be, for instance, the detestable type that we have seen in the movies, the kind known as aliens, but there are new age giant seed, new age Nephilim seed that look exactly like man. And I've covered these things in uh, very painstaking videos that are, I think there's at least eight or nine of these videos that you can find in the playlist. So I've just been sharing there recently about the skies. I've not personally seen these skies, but I am astounded by the frequency with which they are showing up. And God was saying that when the sky gets all pretty, when the sky gets all colorful, when the sky begins to bleed reds and indigos and purples and blues in a way that we know, having lived on earth, that we have never traditionally seen before, it is at your peril that you let the weathermen and the so-called other experts tell you that you are looking at a brand new type of cloud that has never existed in mankind's history, but now suddenly the earth is so different that we can produce these kinds of clouds. You are looking at the arrival of the fallen. So you might want to look into that. On the master's voice, I do have playlists. A playlist is very helpful for you if you are new because it helps you to quickly come to terms with different types of prophecy streams that the Lord wants us to understand. I have covered a ton of material in the last two years, and I'm still working to complete what I have, which is why I'm making videos much more frequently now than I have ever done. Um, so I think there's the Russia and China playlist, which is the first and the most important playlist on this blog. Being an end times prophecy blog, this is a place where God is speaking judgment. So when you come here, you have to understand what biblical judgment is. If you do not know what it is, you may need to spend time in a personal Bible study. Even if you are new to, to Christianity, you are not above undertaking a personal end times Bible study where you simply put end times judgment into Google and it will bring you up a ton of scriptures that you can then begin to look into to understand what does it mean end times? What does it mean judgment? Judgment means that God has weighed it all. So he has put all the good information about a person, a place, or a thing into his scales. He has put all the evil information about a person, place, or a thing into his scales. And now he has brought out extricated a perfect and a whole assist assessment of that person, that place, or that thing. This channel is dedicated almost exclusively to the United States of America. Since the Lord began speaking to me in 2012 until now, it is almost exclusively America that God talks about. I've said on this channel that even when I am pursuing my own personal things, my own personal prayer time, God will come into that prayer time and will begin to talk about nothing except America, such as he did today. And I'm working on cutting out that stuff 
from the personal prayers and seeing if I can turn it from audio, because you, you have to be able to turn these things somehow from an audio to a video, and I'm still finding out how that works. And then when you turn it into that, then I might be able to share some of those things. Today, this video is two prophecies. So I receive, it's one prophecy. I received one prophetic word from the Lord, very long word on September 11, 2022. But I divided it into two because one part of it was to the righteous. And I know when people hear this, they will be thinking, oh good, thank God. But I think that those who are righteous need to understand that there is a standard for the righteous, that the righteous is not everybody who thinks they are the church. It's this weird belief out there. People think that the church is also the bride and you couldn't be more wrong. If you want to know the people who the bride are, the people are the, the bride are the people who actually make it. The bride are the people who follow what the scripture says and says that he who endures to the end will be safe. So the church is going to be severely purged. And part of my assignment under God is to let every listener know that there is a standard to be accounted righteous in the sight of God and not unrighteous. So the entire church doesn't make it to the wedding supper. This is a fallacy that is floating around in international Christendom. And I am here to disabuse everyone who thinks that church and bride are synonymous, that it is not true. In the book of Revelation, John is standing there with the angel and he sees a group of people waving palm fronds before the throne of the Lord. And he says, who are these people? And the angel asks, who are these people? And he says, I don't know. And the angel tells him, these are those who have cleansed their robes in the blood of the lamb. These are those who have come out of great tribulation. The prophecies that the Lord has given me, and even if I were not here to prophesy, the book of Revelation itself and also the book of Daniel clearly shows us that a lot of Christians are completely going to walk away from God. And this is part of the prophecy I bring today. The church is going to be shaved. It is going to be one of the most shaven things. It is going to be more shaved than a sheep that gets shorn by the farmer. A ton of people are going to turn their back on God. You may be listening to this video and swearing in your heart like Peter. I will never turn my back on God. And you might be one of the first people in your family to turn your back on God when you hear and find out the details of what the church is going to have to go through. Those details are right there for anybody to read in Matthew 24. The stuff has been sitting there for years, for centuries. God has only sent me now to make it clear that there is a standard to be accounted righteous. And not everybody is going to be able to hold on. And not everybody is going to be able to pay that price. Jesus says that people will literally forget his name. Christians. He didn't say strangers. He said Christians, celestial, and the children of Christians are going to completely deny my name. They are going to walk away. They're going to refuse to fight for their faith. And they're literally going to say things like, who says that the Lord requires me to die for my faith? The marchers are sitting right there in the book of Revelation chapter six, and I think it's verse nine. But Christians somehow think that all the things that the Lord has said he will use to purge us so that we who endure to the end can turn into the bride. The bride are the people who make it up there and sit down to the wedding supper. And that is not everybody. This is Bible fact. The pastor should have told you the fact that it's 2022 and they did not tell you, tells you that they are false shepherds, wolves in sheep clothing, many of them, they have failed their commission they have sold out for money, fame, cash, YouTube, notoriety, influence, and also a large number of them to secret societies, to the occult, and the devil himself. And they have absolutely no interest in helping you learn how to be someone who will endure to the end. This is why many people cannot traffic with this channel because this channel consistently confronts what mainstream Christianity believes. And with that, we begin part one of the prophecy, September 11, 2022, a word to the righteous. The verse is this, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his own way and the unrighteous his own thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, that he may have compassion. 
and to our God, for he will freely pardon. Isaiah 55, verses 6 to 7. God is waiting to forgive the, the, the sin of people. I always pray before I come on this channel, and I always say, Lord, let my work bear fruit, because there's a kind of work that will fall by the wayside. It's poorly done work. It's shoddy work, and uh, you're going to get no reward for it. On earth, men may praise you, and on earth, you may even build a very big ministry, but, but when it comes to the judgment, you'll have nothing. So I'm always saying to the Lord that as I bring forth his words, let the words have strength to penetrate even the iron doors of the heart of the proud, of the mocker and the scoffer, so that those people at least can get their chance to repent. God is very gentle and God is very loving to the humble. The one who says, oh Lord, beating his breast like that man who was in the temple, oh Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. But to the one who says, Lord, I thank you that I am not sinful like other men, that person, how can you receive mercy from the Lord? The doors of your heart are shut because you think you are living in perfect peace, and yet you will be overturned like Shebna, the scribe, who thought that he was going to retire in peace, and God told him, I will cast you into a foreign land, and you will die without ever seeing your homeland. So let us be careful. When we have sin in our lives, let us race to the cross and not away from the cross. Let us be sheep in our estimation of ourselves and not goats. And as the Lord says here in Isaiah 55, he will have compassion. He will freely pardon you. So when the Lord woke me up, this is a word that came hot off the presses as soon as I woke up on September 11. He was already talking and I had to get my, you know, my, my thing and, and write all this down. A word to the righteous, the time to come into the ark of salvation is nearly closed. Soon, strong waves will begin hitting your shores and you will go from one calamity to the next. You will experience everything I have said to you thus far and more. Therefore, now is the time to accept and receive my rest. The time to cleanse your robes at the door of salvation has been extended for you. Now is the day of salvation, even now when you hear my voice. And the verse is, therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion, in the day of trial in the wilderness. This is Hebrews 3 and 15. So God is saying that it's almost shutting off time for the ark of salvation to be closed. Now, when people hear this, please don't just run off and misconstrue my words because that's par for the course. God saying that the door being closed to the ark of salvation means that the nice time, the easy time, the time where you actually get to get born again and have a group of people laying their hands on you and praying for you and you're crying and all your sins are coming to mind and you're just saying them out quickly and letting them go and there's all that emotion and you're just regurgitating your filth and the spirit of the living God will come into you and burn upon you and after that experience, you'll feel so free. The time for having a conversion experience like that or just even being touched in your bathroom when you're about to shoot up your 15th line of cocaine or crystal meth for the day and a voice turns to you and says Joshua don't and you suddenly can't take the drugs and you fall to your knees and you begin to repent and confess your sins the time for having that kind of 700 club experience is nearly done soon people are going to come to salvation with pain and that's one of the things I always talk about on this channel. I always say that God is standing with open arms and he's still receiving applications. But the Lord has already made me know that a lot of people are coming to him literally dragged through the mud. The mud. There are many people, it's only when you have truly experienced the, so the, the starvation that I speak on this channel. I mean, as someone in the Western world here in America, going hungry is different from starvation. Part of the prophecies for this channel is that America will have famine. Part of the prophecies for this channel is that Americans will eat human flesh in desperation because there will be no food. So it will go from hunger to famine to cannibalism.
I've spoken in some of the old videos that God gave me very distressing vid vid um, visions of how people will tear people to pieces, living people, shredding it and running off with the parts because they are that hungry. And no, I'm not talking about reanime. I'm not talking about people who became zombified and changed and feral and beast-like. Talking about normal, hungry people. People will do the Donner Party in this country. It will happen again, and that will be part of the punishment, the very same punishment that God gave Israel in the Bible, where he told them, you want to try me and offend me and reject me, you will end up eating your children. And they did end up eating their own children. So God is saying that the time to have that nice salvation experience where you feel better and you feel, and there's a support structure. There's people who are around you to help you. The time for having that is almost shut. And soon when the strong waves of the fulfillment of the prophetic words begin to strike America one by one, people say, God says that people will be going from one distress, one calamity to the next. And he says that America is going to experience everything that he has said to the country thus far. Now, I always tell people, go back to the blog and read the prophecies. And here is the secret in it. When you read written words, the expectation that you will linger over the sentences and think about what is being said to you is far greater than when you sit here and you listen to me talk and talk, because by the time you get to the end of the video, it's highly likely that you can only remember highlights from what I said. When you are reading these words, you will think about what you are reading and God will begin to open these words up to you in a way that will deepen your prayer, strengthen your faith and drive out all the false beliefs that you still might have at this time. God saying that a country will experience everything he has said to them thus far. I'm not even going to sit here and say, God is saying that all the prophecies I have said from the beginning until now will happen. No, God is saying that everything that Celestial has said, everything that Dudu Man said, everything Ken Peters said, everything Wilkerson said, all the other people whose names that I don't even know because God never brought their names up to me personally. That means every prophecy that said, turn, repent, and I will not judge you, up until this moment, September the 12th, 2020, he said, it's going to happen to this country and more. The judgment that I bring here in the name of the Lord is a final judgment. It's not going anywhere. We can repent and pray all we want. That repentance is only going to have so much give, so much room. It's not going to turn back these judgments. This is what I said to people when I made the, the video and I was speaking at, one of the, at the end about Roe versus Wade, that people are jumping up and down. We did it. We won Roe versus Wade. I didn't even know about that judgment until I think either a day later, somebody I know texted me and told me, and my response was simply did this. Why did America make Roe versus Wade in the first place? And who's going to bring back the 60 million babies that were sent, kickboxed back to heaven, back to their maker? As long as these two questions cannot be answered, why was the immoral law made? Why did it stay on the book so long? And who's going to bring those children back? God said he will never roll back America's judgment for abortion. This is how you approach prophecy. So God is saying that everything he ever said before I showed up here, everything that every other true messenger ever said and will ever say, he will do it to America and more so that righteous people should realize that now is the time to run to God. Unrighteous people who want to wash their clothes. He said that he's extending the salvation date for you. When you're hearing his voice, meaning you're hearing people telling you come out of your sins and repent. Now's the time to do it. So he was saying that he will provide for righteous people and he will be their provision. And God was very strong on this. He wants us to understand that the provision is not the cans of tuna and the cans of spam and the wheat and stuff that you're, that you're putting aside. This is wisdom in understanding how to prepare for future times, excuse me, please, of difficulty and judgment. Noah prepared in two ways. Noah prepared 
Physically, that means Noah went and got the animals to, to save them and preserve them. And Noah went and got food for the animals and Noah got food for humans. And he was putting all that stuff aside and he was preparing by actually making the physical escape hatch, the boat itself. But one of the things we know that sustained Noah and his family was the fact that God said because of Noah's righteousness, he was going to save Noah's whole family. So nobody talks about Mrs. Noah and nobody talks about three younger Noahs and young Mrs. Noahs because the Bible doesn't have any interest in whether they were righteous or unrighteous. The righteousness of Noah, the Bible calls him a preacher of righteousness, is what impressed God. And God knew that he can't put Noah on this boat and let all his family go to destruction. And so God determined that he would bring Noah and his entire family unit into the boat but I always point out when I bring out Noah that Noah was not living alone on the earth. Noah had an extensive family at that time. And we can tell that Noah's family was extensive simply because in those days, people were living a cool 800, 900, or 750 years. Noah was only 600 years old at the time he finished the boat. He was probably a middle-aged man by Bible lifespans, and yet only eight people made the boat. That means all the Auntie Noahs, Uncle Noahs, Cousin Noahs, and everybody else could not be brought to repentance enough that they came and said, Noah, is there enough space on that boat for us? And this is something that the righteous need to understand. You are losing your peace, losing your joy, losing your mind, losing your sleep, your family relationships. That means your immediate family, your children, your wife, your children, your husband are frayed to bits because you are out there wasting and pouring out time on iron family members who mock you like the people mock Noah, who ignore you like the people ignored Noah, who think you're crazy like the people thought Noah was crazy. And as a result, you are becoming a weak and a shivering mess at home who can't keep it together because you're trying to cry out, the boat is shutting, the boat is shutting. And they're like, what boat? Keep quiet. This was Noah's dilemma. And we can see how Noah answered the question. Noah never stopped building the boat for a day. He never stopped gathering the gopher wood he never stopped coating each piece that he had finished with pitch. He continued preparing because the fact that people mock you and call you an idiot and tell you that you're listening to the crazy woman on that channel has nothing to do with the fact that you should have a hearing ear. You should not have a dull heart. You should continue to listen to the Holy Spirit and prepare in your house naturally and spiritually. I've already covered the 10 virgins. And I've said to many people in recent days, when the sun is shining, you are a fool. That's how you appear to others. When the sun is shining and the government is working and the food stamps are working and the social security checks are going kitching in the bank account every year, and you continue to say, the sky is falling, you appear a fool. It doesn't mean that you are a fool, but because the sunshine makes all problems look less daunting, you shall be called a fool. But when the earth is going dark, dark how, inflation, job losses, which are just America's teething pains that God was speaking to a year ago, two years ago, that the economy would tank. When the teething pains actually turn into something where the teeth begin falling out like they do in these nightmare scenarios on TV, that is when those who have no oil will come and begin to bang on your door saying, share what you have with us. What was that message that you said that woman was giving again? What did she say about the fact that when the government changes hands and we go into the B system? I want to know about that because I just opened up my Yahoo mail and I got an email that is giving out Obama's mass decrees. We will talk about it in this video. And so you always appear a fool when the sun is shining, but when it suddenly goes dark, that is when you will turn into a genius. Until that time, you should follow righteous Noah and prepared. The Lord says that righteousness is its own reward. Righteousness is its own gift. That means heaven recording you in the books of remembrance as a righteous man or woman is the topmost tier of blessing that you can get from God. Abraham believed God, the Bible says, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. 
And that righteousness is what the entire book of Romans is about. The actual righteousness of believing God. There are many people who do not believe God. God was speaking of the cognitive dissonance of America and saying that people will not believe it when they are required to give up their lives in the beast system for being um, Christians. They will say, I'm a child of God. Why would, I, why would God want me to give my life? They will refuse to accept that for some of us, the only way we're getting into heaven is through that guillotine, through the cutting off of the head that I've been speaking about since at least 2021 when I started to see it. They will find it incredulous that anybody will require them to lay down their life for their God, even though ironically their God laid down his life for them. And so God says the best gift you can get for living righteous is that when he weighs you in the balance and the scales of heaven, you will come out through your good and through your bad, a final estimate that the good outweighed the bad and that you had the righteousness of faith. He also said that everybody who was living without this awareness that righteousness is actually its own blessing, everyone who is living for self instead of living for Jesus, everyone who is actually out there denying that there is even God, this is unbelief, by the way, living in sin, he says they will never get that reward. And so, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. God said he will provide for the righteous. He said he will take care of their needs. He said that he will look after them and their families as they need it. He said some of this will be through them having to take actual steps and having faith to prepare for the days ahead like Noah did. And in some cases, he will supernaturally provide for them. But he says that it is two sides of the same coin. You prepare where you have room and ability. This means the resources, the time, the storage space to do so. But he says you must also realize that there is an evil portion up ahead, dungeons and dragons, where you cannot prep. Because there's coming a time in the future, cans of tuna cannot protect you against fallen angels and the Nephilim. What protects you against fallen angels and the Nephilim is knowing the name of Jesus. What protects you is realizing that when you are reading Ephesians chapter 6 and it talks about the full armor of God, that this is not a euphemism. It's not a comfort phrase. It's actually different pieces of real armor that exist just because you can't see them doesn't mean they're not real. So if you don't have that helmet of salvation on your head, protecting this thing and what is inside it, when those things begin to beam out thought waves into your mind that have the power to control your actions and everything that you're doing, as I explained in the UFO and the alien prophecies, then that means that they could march you right off a cliff and people will say, it's a pity how that man committed suicide, but they won't know that the thoughts to do so were planted in your mind and you carried them out like the total slave that you were because your mind and your heart were not shielded behind the helmet and the breastplate of righteousness of Christ Jesus. So even if you keep a gun, it cannot kill an angel. It might be able to kill a normal human New World Order soldier, but if it's one of these self-healing wolf, wolf soldiers, what will the gun do? God says, understand my ways, church. Noah prepared all that he was able to, and that was wise. But once Noah got on the boat and God locked it, then the forces of a supernatural flood that had never been seen before hit the earth. And from that point on, Noah's family the lives of all the sheep, goats, elephants, even the little bumblebees. They were all solely in the hands of God. The Lord says that the battle that is coming will go from the few drops that warned people of the flood, few drops that we have now of crazy politics and inflation, a few drops as we watch men say that they are biological women and see children going to hormone replacement therapy before they are 10 years old. That's how the rain starts. But one day this battle is going to be jacked up to a very high level that will take a toll on people's hearts because people will be arguing about whether the hybrid pig children should be allowed to go to human schools. 
And they'll be asking if clones should be allowed in the workplace. And it will feel like everything that we know for our society is threatening to be washed away. God says that he alone is the shelter of the righteous. And if you do not come into the shelter of the Lord, it will be very hard for you. In the face of overbearing Nazi statism, which I will discuss in the next prophecy, with the arrival of clone marriage laws, which I have already discussed. He says that some of you may utterly fall apart and some of you will even pass away. You can make the garden and you can prep, but you need to stop putting your faith in it. Gardens do not keep away Nazis and they will not hold back the new world order. The new world order will take the house from you. They will take the garden and they will put you in a small echo chamber smart box where the fridge will be talking to you when the milk goes bad. God says that you cannot anticipate this world and some of you cannot conceive it. And I will say here that it's mostly older people who you have to use your imagination for this. But to younger people, I see people comment, commenting about different things that they're watching on Netflix. These younger people in your family could easily put you on to let you know that TV and social media and other things are easily preparing the younger part of, of society to seamlessly transition into this world. Younger people already love technology. It is extremely helpful if you know how to handle it and use it and not let it keep you browsing Facebook for like six hours, which I don't know why people are doing this. What is your life like that you have three hours to keep checking the statuses of other people who don't live with you and are not contributing to your 401k? Why are you doing this? Who will know? So younger people, the younger people, especially the youth, 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 they are being prepared through iPads and other things to seamlessly transition into this world. And that is because the new world order needs these children. It's going to need their labor. It's going to need their time. But above all, because we are going into Nazism of a form that has never been seen on earth before, it's going to need their support. That's why young people are being socialized right in front of their parents. They disdain their parents. They disdain the freedom of the country, um, the freedom and the rights that their parents fought for, and they have nothing to do with it. They want to give everything away and live in a commune exactly as it was in the 60s. And all these times are rolling back again. And so God says that you can't anticipate this world that is coming because this world is going to stress the human heart until he says human strength will utterly fail. And God also says to the righteous and the unrighteous, but mostly to the, uh, the righteous so you can understand him. He says that he is willing to stand aside until people cry, until they finally get it. God says that he will stand aside and let people exhaust their human strength until they finally realize that they can't make it without him and they begin to sob out loud and repent to him properly. There's a lot of fake repentance going on and I'm not going to go into that because there's like five videos on repentance in a playlist if you want to learn what it means to truly repent and do it the right way. God says he will stand aside until people ask his forgiveness for ever thinking they had what it took to get through this transition alone. What is that transition? The transition is from the normal world we are in now where I get to make these videos into the other world that is coming where Cops are going to burst into homes like this and drag people like this off to pay for crimes like this. What is the crime? Simply talking about Jesus, simply talking about the truth. So God says that he will only forgive the idolatry in people if they cry out in true repentance to his name. That is when he will come to them. He will heal their evil backsliding. He will help them to learn and understand why they are so proud and why they think everything is always about them. He said that the church is ex extremely lazy, severely lazy, extremely entitled, and very selfish. God says that we always push away hearing about our flaws as the church, and we refuse to hear. And that's mostly because of this dissonance that, in, that lives in people. They don't think it's possible for God to ever critique them, and that's because the God they know is reckless love, I accept everything. I'm chasing after you on the mountains and the hills. They don't understand that the real God is sitting 
and weighing up a man to see if he is righteous or unrighteous because the real God has to make a final decision about if he's putting an unrighteous soul into the lake of fire or a righteous soul to live with him in eternal fellowship. So God says that the church is so selfish and they only think of themselves and they only want to be comforted even if the other nations are perishing in darkness of their sin and because they don't have the gospel And the Lord is always talking to me about the other nations and talking to me that he has so many children far away who do not even know that they are on his roster to become his children. He's always talking about them and how they don't know that they are going to be born again at the very edge, the very cusp of time. But he says in America, all that comes is people wanting to know about the rapture and how they're going to be safe. And how can these kids be safe with Jesus? And how come there's no prophecies about that? It is an embarrassment to claim to be a Christian nation and not show much idea of what the core of Christianity is, which is to win and bring souls into the kingdom. The scriptures for this is, for Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with clever speech, but so that the cross of Christ would not be made void. And this is Apostle Paul saying that he didn't come with much flowery and colorful language, and he didn't come to preach what the people wanted to hear. He said he came to preach the gospel, which is repent and be baptized so that you can come into the kingdom. And then the other scripture is this, what use is it, my brethren, if someone says he has faith, but he has no works, can that faith save him? If you have faith and you're not actively living out the faith, what is the point of it? Even so, faith, if it has no works, being by itself is dead. James 2, 17. God says that he is the provision of the righteous. He himself, meaning in the future, if you are hungry, God will not only give you spiritual bread from his word to encourage you, he will see about getting you physical bread to eat. He said he will provide for everyone who trusts in him. He will feed them and their family. He will not let the flame, just basically the fires of life as well as real fire, kindle upon them. He will not let their house be drowned. And this is very important because it's not only metaphorical drowning, it's also literal floods, tsunami, and water disasters that are going to come to this country. It does not mean people will not pass away. God is constantly saying that I should put this in the prophecy so that people can know that protection for the righteous does not mean that the righteous do not pass away. The Lord says that even if disease, for instance, which is just one of the way that the righteous will pass, even if disease wins over you down here, it has not won in the spirit. Even if your body perishes, God says that what you should focus on before that happens, before death, is focus on your spirit and not your flesh, for of the spirit we reap eternal life if we die in faith, but of the flesh we only reap eternal corruption if we die in sin. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, he will reap in return. The one who sows to please flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. The one who sows to please spirit from the spirit reaps eternal life. So these are just some of the things God wanted us to know in this first part of a single prophecy. This part is called a word to the righteous. And I will just hear briefly um, a vision that the Lord showed me a few days before I got this prophecy. I think this was just yesterday. Yes. The prophecy, the vision that I saw was this. I saw, I was standing inside a barn. So I was standing inside a barn right at the doors and the barn doors were open and the Lord was there. He was standing by me, but he was out of sight, very tall and At that point, when I was in the vision, I knew that the Lord had gotten tired of calling a very frisky and rebellious bull heifer that was in the field. So I know that there is no such thing on earth called a bull heifer. Uh, A cow is a mammal, it's a female, and then the male cow is called a bull. This thing that was in the field was a mixture of a bull, all the male attributes, just like the bull you see on Wall Street. At the same time, it was a heifer, all the attributes of a female, the big udders, you could just liken it to a woman who was very shapely and well-proportioned. And this creature out in the field was 
had run off. So it had run way off. There was a cornfield and you could see, you could follow the path of how far this bull heifer had gone. It had gone so far out into the field that it had disappeared. And it was almost like a Disney thing because you could see the cow jumping in the field and then it would go back in the grass and leap. It was leaping, it was playing. And before I got there, Jesus had been calling and calling and calling this bull heifer to come back and it would not. And so I was standing there and I, I saw invisible people. So there were invisible people like guards at the edges of the barn doors. And the Lord said to these people without words, shut the doors and never open it for them, for, for that creature to come back in. That's what he said. He said, shut the doors and do not open it for anyone. And what I began to do, believe it or not, is... I began to call not to the bull heifer. I began to call to her fleece. And I said, fleece on the bull heifer. You are very small and humble animals. You are so small that you cannot carry yourself around. And this is why you ride on the backs of animals like bulls, heifers, dogs, cats, camels, whatever. I said, you are such a humble animal. And the thing is that you have had a different and a special assignment. Listen to me, church of Jesus Christ. I said, fleas on the back of the bull heifer that is America. You have been on her back for a long time and you have been doing what fleas do. You have been biting her because that is what fleas do. You have been biting her and by your bites, she should have become so uncomfortable that she should have come back to her master for him to pluck you off. The fleas are the righteous. The fleas are you who continue to talk to your family and they mock you and they hate you and they exclude you from Thanksgiving and make you feel like trash because you want to go deeper with Jesus. I said, fleas of America, the time is now. Leap off the back of the bull heifer and make your way back to the barn. I am here as a chief flea and I am calling you to come back because the barn doors will be shut. And I said, fleas of America, you are very small and it may take you a while to get off the back of that animal to jump off pew, into this big field of corn. And because you're so tiny, you might have a difficult journey back to this barn, but here's the secret fleas. Even if you come back and by the time you come back, you find these gates shut because you are such a small, and a humble animal, I am certain that you can find a crack and enter in. Come back, fleas. And the Lord didn't say anything. He didn't stop me. He didn't say, Celestial, didn't I say that I was closing the barn door? Why are you giving the fleas a second chance? He didn't say anything. He just stood there and I was telling the fleas, it is time to get off the back of that bull heifer. You out there with that boyfriend that has a rock stone heart, and you keep sleeping with him because you think if you offer him all the wife benefits, then he's going to marry you. You are willing to continue in sin because you think a sinner is going to make a wife out of you and make it okay. Instead of saying, I am done with this. I'm breaking it off. I'm going back to the barn. Flee that I am because I know if I go back as a prodigal, he will wash me and receive me. You continue out there in the field with the bull heifer. I'm working on him, you know. He's starting to listen to a few scriptures and he's watched one or two of your videos with me. You are a deceived woman and I know that I'm talking to a ton of you out there. You're pouring out your virtue on the ground, man, by following that woman that continues to roll you in the bed a second and a third time, defiling yourself, son of God and thinking that you will make her a wife if you only keep asking her to do Bible study with you. You need to separate yourself and clean yourself up and come back to the barn, even if you do it later than this video. Barns have cracks and fleas can fit through cracks. You leave the bull heifer out there so she can watch these videos and say, don't you know what you're talking about is judgment for the unrighteous nation? You are the unrighteous nation. You are the nation that God has sent me to tell you your punishment is Revelation 18. And one of the strange things about Revelation 18 is that when the plagues come in one hour, plagues are judgments. The Bible says that all the merchants, all the other nations, 
that used to trade with Babylon stood afar off. I have consistently been saying it, that when America falls into the hands of Russia and China, there is not a nation on this planet that will lift a hand to fight Russia and China as they will be in the future because Russia and China will be used almost the way God used Babylon and the way God used Assyria in the scripture. They will be such an iron fist against this country that Germany is going to think about it and say, well, you know, we just, we just can't do it. We can't do it. Not a single country, this NATO that people put their trust in this, this and that, and so in that. I bring the prophecy and then people say, we have guns, we have guns. The government is going to take your guns and if you fight for those guns, they will shoot you. So as God says, this transition is not what you think. It is not what they have told you. In your favorite places to go and nibble on the lies and feel good and edified, except that you are fortified, edified by lies because the liars are teaching you and prophesying to you a spiel out of their own corrupt belly, and you keep sitting there. And that is because those who eat lies have a matching mirror lie in their heart. They love lies. They have itching ears. And the Lord was telling me, Celestial, do you know the thing about itching ears? An itch is a particular type of discomfort. You can't fix an itch by anything. You can't rub a cream on an itch. You can't, you can't take a pill for an itch. An itch can only be dealt with by a scratch. So people who have itching ears already have a particular spiritual lust for hearing only a certain type of doctrine, only a certain type of information. And until they find the one speaking that information, they are never satisfied. They can never be pleased until they are filled with lies from outside. And that is because there is a heavy appetite for lies inside them already that will never be satisfied with truth. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 9 and 10. That scripture says they perished by the lie. That means when they died and their carcasses hit the earth and anyone walks by and say, how did this woman pass away? A bystander can say, a lie killed her. And then you say, why did she die by the lie? The rest of the scripture says, because she loved not the truth, because he loved not the truth. Leave the bull heifer alone and come in because the barn doors are about to be shut. This is Celestial from the Master's Voice. I want to thank everyone who is a support to this ministry. I strongly appreciate you. I have shared in the past that I am not able to send individual thank yous anymore because there are just too many people. But I want you to know that I truly appreciate it and I pray that the Lord will bless you and multiply all that you do for this channel back to you. Until I see you again, God bless you and goodbye.